And Mike joins us on the Harbor One Hotline this morning. Hey, Mike Milbury, how are you? Good morning. What's How's going everybody on? everybody doing? How you doing? Doing okay. Liking right. the warmer weather now. It's starting to turn. I was outside. It's about 50 degrees, and, I, I, and I'm loving it. Do you, but, but being on the Cape, do you like that, or do you dread the arrival of the tourists? Uh, no, because it's so abandoned here. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing a few people. <laughs> Uh, I assume you're going to make your way up for a few playoff games. Yeah, I think I will. I mean, and and, and by the way, let's just kind of review where this team was when we last talked. I mean, I was wondering whether there was a foundational crack or not. <laughs> and uh, they have a team meeting, and then they shut out Winnipeg. They go against Minnesota, who was 11-0-3, and, and they handle them without too much trouble. They trash Buffalo, and a little ugly coming home against Ottawa, but they had the answer. And that's what's that's what's impressing me that they seem to find the right answer. Whether it's the goaltenders, hasn't Swayman been ridiculous? Alman was, uh, Almark was tr- terrific in the last game against Ottawa. Or maybe it's Bergeron's line or Krejci's line or any one of the four lines. It's been um, their odds-on favorite now for me. There's no question yeah. about it. Well, I mean, I know it's uh, it's always called a different season, but doesn't that give you confidence that should they, you know? get down in a playoff series or be struggling that you have guys who can do that very thing, which is call that team meeting and lead that team meeting and, and turn things around. It, it does. And the depth is also, you know, tremendous. I mean, remember we, had, you got a, a former MVP out of the lineup and a guy that's Felino that's had a great season that has been out of the lineup for weeks and they're still in the wings ready to help out. So it's a it's a great sign. One other thing I'd like to mention is, you know, we talked about Montgomery's willingness to put the defense into the offense. Early on it didn't go very well, but lately it's been it's been fun to watch. He's taken the fear out of the defensemen when they go into the offensive zone. Usually when I played it, you, if you went into the offensive zone, you were so afraid that you were going to vacate your defensive responsibilities that you – had to hurry back. But now you see Lindholm or Orlov and whoever it might be, McAvoy, stay in on the forecheck. That's an unusual situation for, for any team in any era, and it's been working. Speaking of Montgomery, not to speak too early, but it seems like there is some improvement when it comes to the power play, which was really the only issue that you had, I think, a week or two ago on the show. Yeah, there has been some improvement, and I don't know who – gets responsibility but clearly they've they've mixed and matched and and um found a recipe for what ails them and most of the time if you're having tough times on the power play it's simplify uh but Lindholm has been great on the power play moves along the blue line as well as anybody McAvoy does that as well too that changes the angle of your approach and it changes the angle for the goaltender and it's a it's a nightmare for opposing teams so hopefully that's on the mend I heard you make a really interesting point on spitting chiclets, which was that the Bruins missed by a season having uh, Bobby Orr and Ray Bork on the same team, Um, which made me think about Bobby Orr, who clearly is the greatest of of all time to do it here. But where uh, it's early, career not done, but where do you rank Patrice Bergeron when it comes to great Bruins all time? Well, I don't know if you can put a number on it, but... um... You saw that the Minnesota coach called Bergeron the best player in the league and has been for a long time. Um, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer for me, and um, his his level of consistency, you know, rivals that of somebody like Brady. I mean, I know he doesn't have the number of rings that he did, but the level of consistency, the level of professionalism, is uh, has to rank him in the top five of all Bruins to ever put on the uniform. Mike, I, I, a lot of people want to jump down my throat and they want to take me to the fire pit on this. Now, you're a guy who's been there before. You've coached. And the, the question... I, <clears throat> I would imagine you like a good fire pit. Mm. I, I got nothing wrong with a good fire pit. I, 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 I do <laughs> nothing well. at all. I, I do, don't want to be in it. I want to be no, around no, I understand. It. Underrated sometimes, though, the joy that one can get at, at, at a proper it's, fire pit. Toast some yeah. marshmallows. Yes. Is the fire pit really well, underrated? It's really kind of like the lively conversation. And, you know, the I, mm. I think it's... It's a, like I the think, present day water fountain. Yes, yeah, yes. It's romantic. And Greg's a romantic. <laughs> so that's <laughs> why. Right, yeah. Courtney, yes. So, so Mike, we're talking gas fire pit or wood fire pit? Oh, oh, wood. It has to be wood. I don't know. I like I a gas you know, fire no, pit. I think you go either way. You don't get the smell. It's like a grill. Like, honestly, if you're grilling a steak... On a gas grill, 
you're lazy, and you're fraudulent. It needs to be charcoal. But anyway, go ahead. No, I didn't go the way. But, Mike, the, the reason why I asked you this is because my biggest thing is Jim Montgomery and have to make a decision when you talk about goaltenders come playoff time. Not regular season, but the playoffs. And there are a lot of people, Greg, Shime, that believe. Sean McDonough. Sean McDonough that believe you can go in there and you could go every other night with a different goalie like you're doing in the regular season because they're both playing well. And I disagree with that. I think you have to pick one, and if things go left, then you put the other guy in. It's a it's a good question. It's a great situation to be in. Both players have been incredible. Allmark in the last game made saves. What did he make, 40 saves? And some of them are really challenging. <laughs> yeah. And Swayman, back-to-back shutouts. And so... You're in a situation where you got to make a decision. I mean, I had during our Stanley Cup run in eighty nine ninety, I had Moog and Lemelin, and I, I did start with Moog, and then I went to Lemelin and went back to Moog, and and it was it it worked. It didn't work all the way. We got to the Stanley Cup final, but in this case, it, it, there's nothing wrong with playing the two goaltenders, and I, I hate saying it, but I they've both played so well. They both have such a great relationship with one another. Uh, the team seems to support both of them. It's it, you know, it's a long grind, and goaltenders are under there are a lot of mental pressures of being a goaltender. You, you're the last line of defense, and people are counting on you to cover for their mistakes. So, so it can be overbearing. But you know what? At this point, I think you just play it as it lays. You know, if you're a golfer, you know, you, you get a shot in the rough, you have to deal with it. And now the come come the playoffs. You win five to nothing in the first game, and Olmark's in goal. Jeez, do you really want to make a change? Well, that's what I, I'm asking. But, I know, but, but, I, but, I know, and I'm saying I don't have the answer. But I think it, what, sometimes you just have to let the game come to you as a coach and make decisions based on what you see and how things are developing, how the team feels. There's not an answer to this, but the thing is, I mean, I, I it's easier for the for the coach if you have one guy that's you can just say, okay, you're going. But in this case, it's hard to pick one over the other. Well, it's I mean, never, it's so close. I, I don't think that you can compare it to any team ever before. I mean, you have a number in the league, a number one and number two goaltender on your roster. It's mm-hmm. never, it, it, it hasn't happened. So from the, you know, from the outside, from the fan perspective, I, I feel like I look at it and feel like those guys feed off each other, Mike, which may well, be like a ridiculous fan thing to say, but... <laughs> It, it, it seems like those guys are, are are able to feed off each other, which is an amazing thing to have. It, it is. And, you know, it's such a long grind from for four rounds up to 28 games for these guys that I know they're going to play both goaltenders at some point during the playoffs. Yeah. Whether they go to a rotation or whether they go to spot spot Swayman or spot Allmark depends on how, how the cards are, are laid out. You know, they get down – they split the first two games at home against whoever their opponent is, and maybe it's time to go back to the other guy. But I, I just it's one of those things that he's gonna have to feel his way through. But he I don't think he's gonna feel uncomfortable going to one or the other. I mean maybe we can help we can help Wiggy out if the playoffs started tomorrow, who would be like who would be your who would you start? I would it be Allmark? I think it would be Allmark, yep. but I, I I don't think there's a you know, there's still what Ten or twelve games to play. Mm-hmm. And if the Swayman puts together three more shutouts in a row, then you have to start scratching your head and saying, maybe it's maybe it's Swayman. He's been really good. Mike, well, you look at the rest of the season, twelve games to go. And if you're Montgomery, how do you weigh getting wins, still playing hard, making sure guys are getting better, but also resting guys and making sure that they're ready to go when it counts and looking out for injuries? He's already started to rest some guys at times. He's rested Krejci. He's rested Orlov. And by by the way, how good has that guy been? He has been just an incredible he's been like as good as Lindholm and McAvoy at some nights. I mean, he's it's just it's amazing to to see how he's been he's been set free. He was playing with John Carlson in Washington, so he was sort of the fallback defensive guy. And now we're seeing what he can do offensively, and it's been impressive. So I, I think he's gonna rest guys. I think Bergeron is a key guy that he has to rest. I don't think he has to worry about the wins. He's going to finish first overall. But, you know, you want to go into the to the playoffs with a sense of rhythm and confidence and everybody in tune. And, and I, I, it's a tough balance 
but I think he's played it pretty well so far. I think he's going to continue to play it pretty well. A number of back-to-backs coming up. I would expect him to rest Bergeron uh, at some times and Krejci at some times. Though the, those are the two dinosaurs that need to you know, find a pillow once in a while. Mike, it's kind of tough to explain to non-athletes, and I think that's the hottest thing for Greg and Shyam and the rest of them, the competitive nature that guys have. They always feel like, oh, if I was in that, we could have did this, or why take me out? I'm doing so good. And I think those are the things that these guys are missing around me, Greg and the rest of the people. They they don't realize that those guys, they do have a great relationship, but they're both competitors and that's all I'm saying is I think that pot might bleed into it. And that's why I think this is the most difficult decision that I would say that you, because you, Greg brought this up, that you'll see any coach ever make in the NHL because you've never been in this position. Well, on the other hand, who can blame him for going one way or the other? Right. You know, you, if you want to platoon, platoon. Okay, that was good. That worked all season long. You want to go with a, one of the two that's been so outstanding all all year long and maybe spot in the other guy? Who could blame him? Who could blame him if he went with one guy and then just waited for him to falter and then played the other guy? He's got multiple choices ahead of him, and they're all good. See, I think that's what I would do. I would play one guy and win the other. Uh, like they did last year. Linus played the first two games. They went down 0-2. They went to Swayman. Um Mike, when you look around the league um, and and you look at teams that have surprised you this season, is it is it, is your choice most surprising the Devils because they're they're kind of coming on strong here now? They are. They've been coming on strong all year, and they have surprised me. Um, they they're getting better goaltending, I think, than anybody thought they would get. Their defense is pretty solid. I mean, Dougie Hamilton, who I think they would. I would try to run through the end boards if they played them. I mean, I I just don't know. I just don't like anybody with a name like Dougie. <laughs> uh, and they they've got a number of forwards that can play very well offensively. But but you know what? You can. That's down the road. Um, right now, it looks like it's either the Islanders or Pittsburgh or Florida. I mean, pick your poison there. But um, I mean, for me, you saw Pittsburgh play in Colorado last night. They were. They were all out. They needed the game. They need. They were in ninth place, and they came back and beat a Stanley Cup champion. And the Islanders have superior goaltending, and Florida has been coming on like gangbusters. But I, I will say this: that one, if there's a little bit of a pattern that concerns me, not very much, but Detroit and Chicago young guys played with pace, and Boston had to push to keep up with them. And they were probably thinking that you know they should beat this team, and they they didn't. Ottawa pushed the pace and really press the Bruins. The Bruins have to keep the pace of their play up in order to beat these teams. And they're not the fastest team in the league. It's not the slowest team by any means, but um, the quicker teams are the ones that are going to give them a little bit of a problem. All right, and if you had to, if you had to call it today, how many goals do you think Connor McDavid ends up with? Is he, is he over 70? No, I don't think he's going to get to 70. I'd see high 60s, yeah, but that's not bad either. <laughs> oh, no, what's he at not. now? 50? He's at 56, I think. And where's Pasta? Pasta's not too far behind, He's right? Not that far behind, yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't see the Edmonton game last night. Did he, did he get any? Uh, I didn't see it either. Shime, did he get one last night? I mean, I think he's... Who's the last guy? Who's he was at 56 going? He had two going, last night. Yeah, he had two last night. So he's night. got 58. Yeah. Wow. It is fun to watch that guy play. It's too yeah. bad he's out there. and We never get to see him. That's the only <laughs> no, problem. No. <laughs> First off, you can't find ESPN because it's on, like, the Ocho. you got to have six satellites just to get it. And then the fact that they, you know, the NHL, I would think that they, Mike, the NHL or whether it's TNT that they're on, they would always say, we want America to see this so we can kind of get the novice fans to really enjoy the game because he's that good of a player. Well, we that... discussed this before, but it'd be a great thing for the game if mm-hmm. you were playing in, here. I mean, in or the, if they even the... talked about him on ESPN. Well, I think they do. No, nah, not like that. Like on like first take or these get up shows. What does Pasternak have? You have forty five or forty or maybe forty six? I thought it was like forty eight. Forty eight. Yeah, I think he's got forty eight now. Yeah, but I mean, listen, he's had a great season. He's going to finish over fifty if. Something doesn't happen to him, which I don't think it will. And and but McDavid, getting back to him, yeah, you, you got to show him as much as possible. You got to you could do a highlight reel on just about every game with this guy. And 
they should milk that because it's it's worth it's worth watching. He's worth the price of admission. Uh, correction from a bunch of listeners on the text line: McJesus is at sixty. So oh, he's at sixty. Yeah, he had fifty-eight entering last night, like Mike so, said. Yeah, he so scored he 50, two more. So Fifty-nine 60. and sixty last night, which is uh, which is amazing. So. Well, how, how would you compare his skill level, Mike? Because uh, Greg, you brought up Bobby Orr, right? How would you compare the skill level of McDavid to like the greats of Bobby Orr and Gretzky? Because you know, I didn't really see Bobby Orr play unless it was highlights, but I did, I did see Gretzky. And, like, McDavid, it, it just seems like he has this next gear and skill level. You know, I compare his skating to Orr's and maybe his game sense to Gretzky. It could be a combination, but to have that lethal combination is, is special. There isn't. I don't think there's. you've seen a player like this, really. It's a... It's a fascinating thing to see him with a puck and, and increased speed when you usually it slows you down and you, to see him with his vision to see him with his ability to separate from defenders i mean 60 goals now is it it's the it's, it's ridiculous but so i, I mean I, I guess i would say he's a generational player and if i place him it's tough to place people and from different generations but he's the player of this generation without doubt not in the second place isn't even close Mike Milbury, always a pleasure, and we'll talk to you next week as we get closer to the start of the playoffs. All right, kids, see ya.